Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. Today we're going to talk about amniotic membrane. We're going to talk a lot about the different ways it works and why how we use it in ophthalmology and the future of amniotic membrane. And we'll touch on the controversy with Regenerize. We'll talk about that today. But before I get started, I want to say thank you to all of you who have tuned into our podcast, have sent us questions to all the patients that come in from all over the world. Thank you for joining us and for coming in to see us and for telling your uh, friends and family and people I know on YouTube and Facebook and uh, the dry eye zone and all these websites. So thank you. Please don't forget, though, while you do all your research and you're trying to get answers to your questions about your eye discomfort, to please blink or patch one eye as you talk. You know, we've been talking about this in other podcasts, and patients know that we have now teenagers and even younger kids that we recommend them covering one eye with either press and seal or tape, taking turns as they're on the screen, because you don't need both eyes when you're at the screen or when you're doing a lot of things at home. Even listening to me, don't forget to blink if you're on YouTube. You can listen to most of what I'm saying with your eyes closed. And I try to remind patients of this every single day. Uh, I just saw a patient who's a lawyer, works at a very top firm in New York City, and she has dry eyes. And I told her, you know, make sure when you're talking to people like me that care about you, and many of you have heard me say this, she's just staring. She won't blink. She won't, she literally is just focused so much on what I'm saying, because that's her profession. That's what she's trained her brain to do, both in her professional career and also at the screen. And I'm saying, you know, when I, when you talk to people like me that care about you, close your eyes and she'll still like to stare. And a lot of people do this and it's a, it's kind of scary because we've rewi- we rewired our brain to be so attentive and have our eyes focused that we literally are forgetting to blink. And this is very true for young people. Uh, my, one of my sons is out uh, flying to New Mexico as we sp- speak. And I told him, you know, when you walk through the, the terminal, look at the kids that are on the screens. You're going to see there are a lot of kids are on the screens and they're not blinking, trying to encourage him not to be on the screen during his trip. Uh, but you'll be surprised if you go to a restaurant or even ourselves, obviously. You know, I see a lot of people at stoplights or on their phone. And when I look at people, I'll check their blink rate. And it's kind of amazing how we really will focus. And that's what the studies indicate. So... Because of that, we have still the issue of dry eyes around the world, and one of the key treatments we are now using more and more is called amniotic membrane, and it's specifically for the condition of keratitis, or what we call keratoconjunctivitis sicca. And just to explain a little bit for people that might be new to the channel or on our podcast, kind of understanding what this means. So what happens with dry eyes, as we've talked about, is that there's a drying up of the tear film, and that can happen in many processes. The tear film has three components, the oil, the water, and what mixes it together called the mucin. There may be other components as well that have not been discovered, but those are the key ones we understand. The oil is called the mybum. It comes from the mybomine glands, and it's crucial to keeping the water from evaporating. The water is produced, or the aqueous, is produced by the lacrimal gland, which is a little organ right under the rim of your orbit, the upper rim on the temporal or outer edge on both sides. And the mucin is created by goblet cells, which is on the surface of the conjunctiva. So the clear covering of the white part of your eye is called the conjunctiva, you've heard of conjunctivitis, and that is filled with these little cells called goblet cells that produce mucin. So all three of those layers have to work together to get a good blink and make the surface clear so it doesn't affect the vision. If you that are listening or you're watching, if you don't blink for five minutes, I guarantee you can't do that. You'll have horrible pain. Your vision will get incredibly blurry. You can even get a headache or start a migraine from some type of, uh, from that type of stimulation where you're not blinking. So don't recommend doing that for sure, but it's a amazing how many kids out there and will go three or four minutes without blinking. And so that leads to a cycle of inflammation that starts to cause the oil glands, the meibomian glands to shrink and atrophy causes sometimes the lacrimal gland to have some signs of atrophy or not working as well and probably affects the mucin layer, although that's the kind of part we still haven't been able to really quantify or image yet easily nor have we been able to image the lacrimal gland other than CAT scans, but the meibomian gland gives us some information about what's happening. So when that process starts and there's inflammation, the surface of the eye called the cornea, the epithelial cells, that means the very first surface of the cornea can get injury or inflammation and lead to itis or keratitis. Itis is inflammation from Latin. And so when that happens, it can cause pain, it can cause blurry vision, redness, even reflex tearing, uh, burning, uh, stinging, 
foreign body sensation, sometimes even itchiness kind of comes in where there's a cycle of allergy with the dryness that becomes a vicious cycle because allergy makes dryness worse, dryness or the my booming gland atrophy makes itching worse and it becomes the cycle. So when we've tried a lot of different options, especially the FDA approved options such as Zydra, Sequa, Cyclosporin, Restasis, of course, uh, artificial tears non-preserved. We're trying that warm compresses to kind of get the oil to come out. We've tried a lot of those things. Sometimes even punctal plugs may or may not help. When we tried all of those things, generally, uh, or at least we think that the patients can tolerate the Zydra, Restasis, and Sequa or can afford it. A lot of patients cannot afford it. We will then go on to platelet-rich plasma drops or autologous serum. Uh, platelet-rich plasma drops, at least in my practice, seems to be more effective than autologous serum for the majority of patients. And if that doesn't help or, again, patients can't afford it, the amniotic membrane is an option if they have the keratic conjunctivitis sicca or signs of keratitis, often labeled superficial punctate keratitis or SPK for short, meaning we see signs of dryness on the core. So amniotic membrane is a wonderful membrane you've heard me talk about before. Amniotic membrane comes from the placenta of a baby that's been born. Uh, that's the way we've always used it. And so the placenta is the organ that protects the baby in utero in the mother's womb, gives it nutrition, and also heals the baby of any particular issues. So for instance, when it, this how this was discovered was in, I think it was 1940, let me just double check. I actually have the paper here. Let me just see if I can find it. Um, might have been a little bit later than that. This uh, baby had surgery in utero, or I think this was kind of a initial um, uh, experiment, but then eventually this was played out in real uh, live. Here we are. The 1947 in London. Uh, so they were using the amniotic membrane for chemical burns. And so what they found over time uh, was that when the baby had surgery in utero or a minor injury, the baby would be born without any scar on its surface tissue. And even sometimes, obviously, within the organ itself, but especially with the uh, surface, if they did surgery while the baby's in the mother's belly and they're trying to fix, let's say, a, a kidney issue or a heart issue or something related to the systems of the baby, the baby was born with no scar on the skin. And it kind of in a way, well, that's miraculous. And it really was the amniotic membrane healing the tissue because the amniotic membrane is filled with different types of molecules which can heal tissue back to the way you were when you were a baby. And the names of those molecules are basically cytokines, growth factors, interleukins, and even something called pluripotent stem cells. So these are very healthy stem cells, different from the idea of the embryonic stem cells. Of course, they're embryonic stem cells, but after the baby is born and the baby is no longer an embryo and the baby is in the mother's arms, most placentas get thrown away. And that's a shame because most placentas can be used to heal tissue because the placenta maintains its effect. The effectiveness of the amniotic membrane can last for years. It's super exciting. And there's been many, many papers, a lot of research done by Schaefer Sang, who is kind of the father of bio tissue one of the biggest companies that provides amniotic membrane for all kinds of injuries, not just ocular injuries or ocular surgeries or dry eye, but also for diabetic ulcers or healing wounds um, from battled sh soldiers and things like that. So the Schaefer team was able to isolate the actual names of the molecules, which I've mentioned in previous podcasts, but just to go through it again, they published a paper in 26, 2006 showing that the amniotic membrane stromal matrix has an anti-inflammatory action by inducing apoptosis, which means cell death, it causes cell death, of interferon gamma uh, activated uh, monocyte macrophage RAW264.7 cells. And this action is not caused by nitric oxide, but instead by the downregulation of the anti-apoptotic uh, uh, NF dash kappa B and AKT F K H R signaling pathways. That was the title of their main punchline of their paper. Basically what it's meaning is that they can isolate the actual molecules that are in charge of the anti-inflammatory component within amniotic membrane. And of course now they're trying to create a liquid that can cause this to occur without having to extract placenta from an amniotic membrane. And that's of course taking a long time. And But they're getting there. So it's just kind of the, the, the question is how long is it going to take to get there. Uh, in the meantime, 
what we're doing is using amniotic membrane either cryopreserved from a company or from a donor that we basically will double check their blood work, make sure there's no transmittable diseases, make sure there's no infection there. We, of course, process it properly. And this is according to published protocols by Dr. Sang and his team and other doctors around the world. And along with an investigational research protocol approval, we have the ability to use that, which has been a game changer for patients. It's been really healing. And I'm always impressed by how some patients will have one treatment with this amniotic membrane and often literally have symptom relief for sometimes months. What we've noticed is it just depends on the patient if it's going to not last at all, which is the biggest risk. It doesn't help at all. That's the biggest risk. We have seen zero infections in the world's literature that I could find as of this podcast. Uh, zero complications from the amniotic membrane. It is very safe and it's very healing. Uh, the only downsides is the symptoms you feel when the membrane's on the eye. So there's many ways now to put on membranes. The most common way is called Procara. That's from the company called Biotissue, which has a little ring that you just basically pop it in the eye. It stays there for about a week. You take it off five to seven days later, or if the patient can't stand it, you take it out sooner. I love Biotissue. Uh, Procara works great, but a lot of my patients cannot tolerate the ring. I know I cannot tolerate that ring. It's so uncomfortable. Uh, I used to tell patients, don't curse me when you, we put it in because you're going to be you know, hating me for the weekend that you're using it. People would have to take Tylenol cold ice packs or just patch the eyes would be very uncomfortable but it does work the second way is with a kind of freeze-dried amniotic membrane where you put it on it looks like a freeze-dried tissue paper and you put a contact lens on but I don't feel that's as effective to be honest in terms of symptom relief as the bio tissue procara the third way which we've been using and we used it at Harvard for years is just to take the piece of membrane that's been processed and everything's been checked with the sample of the uh, donated placenta and we put it right on the eye and then we patch the eye usually with double patch uh, just an iPad we sometimes we have used press and seal once on a patient that I his her eyelid kept on opening up under the patch and so we put the press and seal and that kept the eye closed and we put a couple of patches and we've noticed that patients do best when they can keep the patch on for about 48 hours but we've had patients keep it on as low as two hours and still have a positive improvement and the range of improvement can be sometimes no effect at all which is very rare but has happened to months of benefit and now we're recording patients' testimonies because we want to kind of get this on record that this has been kind of a nice uh, addition to what we've been using before. So I just wanted to go through that with you. We have now a video on YouTube that I'll try to link into this podcast to kind of, or at least the video ver- video YouTube version of it, to kind of show you what it entails. It's minimal discomfort. I haven't had really anyone say that they felt uh, any pain during the procedure of the actual procedure putting the membrane on. I have had maybe a couple of patients, less than 1% of patients, say that they had a foreign body sensation with this kind of patch technique. I've had probably about less than 1% of patients say the tape bothered them. So we have one patient that brought in their own tape that they knew would not hurt their skin. Um, No one's had an infection. No one's had any complications. It is still covered by insurance, which is wonderful. It is effective. When we take off that membrane, if we are able to take a look right after that patch is taken off, uh, we can see the cornea usually looks like a... say a baby's bottom it looks perfect it looks completely perfect the keratitis is gone the question is because you're living your life you're still on screens you still may have an issue causing the the oil not to be able to come out or implement implement inflammatory factors kind of there then the inflammation comes back and the question is how long will that take so that's what we are still studying to see why some people can go months without needing another treatment or even needing it again they can keep things under control with the blinking warm compresses the uh, IPL tear care loop of flow keeping the oil pumping uh, off and on you know uh, plate leverage plasma or stasis zydra sequa those anti-inflammatories in general uh, prp lipoflow i you know, all those things ipl probing some people can go just with that and not ever need the amniotic membrane again and some people do need it again and then they get an additive effect that in other words the first membrane may not help as much the first time maybe a couple of days a couple of weeks but then the second time it just takes them to the next level where they can be symptom free for months and so we're trying to understand why certain patients have no effect and some patients have an incredible effect with just one treatment and why do some patients need multiple treatments with the amniotic membrane so that's the key thing that I want you to be aware of the last part of the amniotic membrane 
membrane is that we give a protocol to use afterwards. So after you take off the patch, the membrane will look like a little piece of wet tissue paper or saran wrap. It's very small. Sometimes you won't even see it. And then you just throw that away. You live your life as you usually do. We'll usually give you either to use your platelet-rich plasma drops after the amniotic membrane has been removed, or if there's any concern for needing an antibiotic afterwards, we'll give you an antibiotic for two or three days. Sometimes people don't need that if they're on their platelet-rich plasma, which has a natural antibiotic activity. Uh, then you just come back and see us at the next scheduled appointment, and many patients do feel significant improvement. And I remind them that the more your eyes are closed, the less you're going to need to have to do these types of procedures for the rest of your life. So if you're young, which many of us are still, uh, and you're still start and you're starting to notice symptoms of your eyes, do something about it. Do not ignore it because it will get worse, and we don't want that to happen. So a lot of this will be in my blog. I'll try to have a link of the papers that I referenced, and please pass this on to friends and family, and thank you for subscribing. Have a great day.